There's one thing, and we've talked a lot about, you know, your first huge career success on the, uh, in, in your, you know, career was Magnum. And yeah. uh, Magnum P.I. Yeah. was a huge show. And <laughs> one of the things... And they rerun that show a lot, and it still holds up. I will yeah. say the one thing that doesn't hold up, because fashions change, is that Magnum wore really short shorts. <laughs> Did, back, I think we have a photo here. Yeah, Magnum wore some pretty... <laughs> Those are correct, George. Those are those are that correct. Is, that is correct. That was the style. Any more correct, and there's nothing left to the imagination. <laughs> that is the appropriate style. I mean, really? the, this new stuff with the baggy stuff. Uh, I don't know why people wear them except to hide weapons. Right, and, and, right. Um, <laughs> well, that's a good reason. And the crotch piece, if you'll pardon the expression, oh is, my God. is just, yeah. Get well, your hands out of there. Sorry. What are you doing? It's you can just say crotch piece, and you're yeah. like, the crotch piece, <laughs> zoom. No, no, no. It, it, my hand wasn't there. It I was, understand. It was down here. It's, it, just, it, it just, it, it's too far down, and it's going to rub your legs raw. So, you know. but if, but there's the opposite problem uh, with those Magnum shorts, which is the crotch piece must have been somewhere up in your belly. No, uh, no. It, it was comfy if you had good underwear. But of course, the great irony is, is, is I didn't really find good underwear till till recently. What do you mean? What you you were using the wrong underwear back then? <laughs> What Some, kind of underwear do they have in the 80s? I don't remember. Not good briefs. Right. You got to wear briefs with those. And, I would and think so, yeah. I don't, a lot of women won't understand this, but the guys will. You know, the, 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 the little quickie slot to, so you can go to the bathroom quickie. I mean, in the bri in the briefs, there's the, the briefs, little, uh, yeah, the little yeah, like, well, hey, look at you. It, it's, Hiya, you know, there's yeah. that thing. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Anyway, but they, they, they don't work. They're, they're, they're just kind of a gimmick. And I finally found some, some underwear that. Uh, that really works. They got a high rise Polo Classic briefs and a great slot. Are you getting money from Polo Classic <laughs> briefs? No, you should you're look getting, into them. You're getting money? Well, I don't, I'm good with my, I don't wear anything. I just go. <laughs> God, I'm proud of you. I ride the show bareback. I like it au natural, you know what I'm saying there? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> a lot more than you want to know. That would work with those shorts. So what are they called? Polo Classic? Polo and you classic like them brief. because the, uh, the... The slot works. The slot... <laughs> <laughs> what a great yeah. slogan. Would you like to do a live commercial for them right now? Yeah. Oh, let's see a live... <laughs> Polo Classic briefs. The slot's the way I like them. I can see the free underwear coming yeah, now. Yeah, that Maybe. guy is not getting paid. That's the worst thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's, that's true though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, well, I'm glad. Let's get the for word out on those people. briefs. That's yeah. the brief yeah. for you. Now, talk about commercials. You did a lot of commercials yeah. earlier, in your, earlier in your career before you got big in, in TV and movies. Yeah. What kind of commercials were you doing? Well, I, I was particularly big on hygiene products. You know, like. Uh, close-up toothpaste and, and soaps and, right. and, and colognes. Right. And, and one thing you do in a commercial, you learn very early on if you ever want to get another job, if you have a shower scene, you, 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 you have to shower ecstatically. Just right. almost like an orgasm. It, it, it's just crazy. And, and you oh rub soap all over you. First you were down here, and now you're having an orgasm up here. Well, I, I love I, the new Selleck. He's like, ah. Oh, oh, oh. In one commercial, uh, it was a Chaz Cologne commercial, I sustained a very serious nipple injury from that. What happened? Well, the soap had rubbed all the, all the you skin. You were rubbing yourself so vigorously that you... which you always do. Ecstatic yeah. is, is what you do in commercials. Right. So, the, with this nipple injury, um, when I slapped on ecstatically the cologne all over my body, right, right. I died, I flinched. And right, it, right. And it really hurt. You don't want to do that with an alcohol-based product. Right, right. Yeah. Once the nipples are gone, you want to leave the yeah. cologne off. Yeah. That's probably the idea. I've noticed or at also... least until the scabs form. Nice, yeah. nice. Well, I was worried that that story wasn't unpleasant enough, but now, <laughs> now we have scabs in there, which is good. But I have noticed that in commercials, like even for something as common as just like a common fast food hamburger, they do make people bite into it and then go, oh! oh no, and it's, it's just not possible. It's way bigger than life. Right, yeah, right. It's huge. Right. And, and, and ecstatic is the word for all showering sequences. Right, right. Now, um, we're If looking... you want to do a shower commercial. No one wants to see me do it. No one wants to see. I have put it, I've put it out there to Irish Spring, <laughs> which is a natural well, hookup with me, that I would, if they want, 
yeah. I would promote Irish Spring because I'm sensitive about commercials. I don't like to do them, but I'll, yeah. I'll promote Irish Spring because I use the product, yeah. and they, they don't want to see my upper body. Yeah, well, watch your nipple. Yeah, 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 no one wants to see it. Um, your movie career, of course, <laughs> lot of, uh, a lot of different highlights. But I want to get to one movie that not many people uh, know about, yeah. which is uh, early in your career, you did a uh, movie, Myra Breckenridge, and you yeah. did it with <clears throat> Mae West, the famous yeah, Mae West. Mae. This yeah. was like one of the, probably the last thing that she worked on. Second to last, but she hadn't done a movie in like 20 years and she was 81 and it was really neat meeting her. And uh, it was my first kind of big break. That's cool. Yeah. And, and you know what's weird is we were watching the movie, the early parts of the movie today, and you don't have a mustache in it. And it's so funny to see you without the mustache because we all think of you with the mustache. Well, that's not entirely true. I mean, obviously, you didn't see the whole movie. Um, it's the first time I did have a mustache. It just appears in the middle of the movie. It comes later on. Let's take a look at this clip. Well, I don't care about your credits as long as you're over sexed. Oh, that's one of my credits. A bed. Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> it's incredible. It shows up and, on camera. And, and, and apparently your mustache from the Lower East Side. <laughs> <laughs> I'm late, boss. But I mean, in spite of all that and the fact I was young, can't you just see the magic shining through in I, that work? I did. Yeah. <laughs> now, did you like working with, I mean, Mae West had a famously sort of dirty sense of humor, very witty. Yeah. Was she fun working she with? She was cool. She, she wrote her own stuff. Right. Uh, actually, I played, uh, as you may recall, Young Stud number three. Um, <laughs> I always think of you as not Young Stud name. number two. But yeah. Well, actually, Young Stud number seven was was the guy with the really big bit. I had that little bit where I dropped the briefcase. Right, it? right. But but Young Stud number seven, she walks by me. He was tall, and she says, "How tall are you?" He says, six foot seven inches." She said, "Never mind the six feet. Let's talk about the seven inches." Nice. This is good stuff. This that is was a, a great gig. That's that's right. Guy went on. I don't know who he was, but he may have, may have got a lot of work from that. That man's name was Max Weinberg. <laughs> uh, he's right, it's a proud moment. <laughs> well, let's talk about, you're, you're here to talk about uh, Stone Cold. Yeah. And Stone Cold, this is uh, actually kind of a cool character for you. Tell, tell us about this guy. He's, he's, a, um, he's, he's a guy who's had a kind of tough life. He was a homicide cop in L.A. Right. Not in this movie, but that's what happened. He got right. fired. He drank on the job. Now he's a small town police chief in Massachusetts. And, um, he gets a serial killer right. um, in the town and call him old fashioned. He thinks it's a bad idea if the national media come there because they'll ruin the place. Right, right. Uh, so he tries to solve it by himself. He's got a police force of three people. He's just a great character with well, a lot of Well, he's got his flaws. demons, which I think is neat. He's, he's got, got demons and he's funny. You know, every time he, he starts to feel sorry for himself, he'll crack a joke. And that's Robert Parker who wrote this series of books. And it was a thrill to do him because uh, I'm a big fan. Right. He are wrote you gonna Spencer do, for higher numbers. Right. Are you going to do more, you think? If, if they ask. If they ask. And, and, and that means people have to watch it. All right. Well, that's where this part comes in. Yeah. Stone Cold airs this Sunday night at 9 on uh, CBS. So check that out. Tom, you're always a good sport. Thanks, Thanks so much for being here. Tom Selleck, Jamie Kennedy coming up. We'll take a break. We'll be right back.